Hey everyone, um, I'm going to be installing an oil cooler on my 2019 Indian Springfield. And I thought, well, you know, I'll go ahead and try to make a video of it, even though I've never installed one of these before, but there's not much help online. There's one video that I've seen that is really hard to follow because it's so dark, you know? So I've got one of my video lights here that's gonna help be able to show what I'm doing underneath the bike. Of course, the oil cooler will be installed down there. I first have to drain the oil, which I won't video that because, I mean, there's plenty of information online on how to do that for your bike. But before I am getting started, I had to remove this Kyriakin um, cover that I had installed and it was a real pain in the butt because one of the, uh, here's the little bracket that, that it used, but unfortunately the, the two bolts that, that this bracket is installed on the bike um, had to come out because that's the two points where the lower grommets for the oil cooler will hang on to, which there's one right there on the right side and there's another one on the left side right there. So that's where those lower grommets will go. And that's where this bracket was. And anyway, I nearly stripped out one of the, the bolts. I think it was the one here. It won't even come out of the bracket. Try and get it out. It was really jammed in there. So if you have one of those installed, just be real careful that you don't strip out the head on those bolts or else you're going to be in big trouble. Now, one thing about the Indian instructions, um, as they are with practically everything that Indian sells, is they're so backwards. I don't know who uh, proofreads these things or goes to the steps that they say that you should go to, but it's really silly in these instructions. Because, as you see, I'm reading them, and I've actually studied this before I started today. Um, it, it tells you to install the oil cooler on, but then it goes in and says, Oh, uh, install the, both lower mounts prior to mounting the oil cooler. So it's kind of, you got to make sure you install those mounting, uh, those grommets. They're like little rubber grommets that go at the bottom, uh, those two holes I just showed you. So uh, I think that's silly. It really is. They should put that at the top of the page, don't you think? Anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm going to do my best to make this short and sweet. It's not really going to be that difficult, I don't think, but we'll see. All right, there's uh, three of these type bolts in the uh, package of parts, and they're the ones that are gonna hold the grommets and also secure the top part of the cooler right there. So we need to put a bolt through this, and it says in instructions to put it in that way where the rubber side touches the frame. And this is gonna go on the right side, right up there. As you can see, that's the right side of the bike. Oh, I'm sorry, gotta get this closer. And there's that bolt, hang on, let me show you. So, as you can see, it's gonna be right there in that hole. That's where I'm gonna install this. Okay, I've got the uh, rubber grommet on the right side of the frame bolted on and then I have the other one right there. I haven't tightened them down to spec yet, which it says in the manual. You use a 10 millimeter socket and you torque it to 84 plus or minus nine inch pounds. I could see doing that on this one here because it's got a metal spacer inside that will prevent the rubber grommet from crushing. However, on that one there, you don't want to tighten it that tight because it, the uh, oil cooler, the little mount is going to go right in between that little groove there. And if you tighten this bolt down too much, it's going to remove that, that groove is going to be flattened, squeezed together. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to install the cooler first before I tighten that down all the way. Otherwise, there's no way that, and I'll show you what it looks like on the cooler itself. <sighs> It's that thingy right there. That's gotta go in between that groove. So I don't know. 
And another problem is, hang on. This plug right here, which is attached to the this thing here, is kind of in the way of the hose, one of the hoses that goes from the cooler into the new mount, which I haven't put on yet. So I may have to take this off and somehow rewire it or something. Here's one of the oxygen sensors for the front header, uh, this cable here. And that was kind of stuffed down inside here. So that's gonna be in the way too. So this is gonna be some fun, but we'll see. Never say never, right? So now I'm gonna change my oil and then I'll get to the, the step of removing that mount thing there and replacing it with the one that comes in the kit, which is this. So I'll be back. Yes, I'm laying on the floor, by the way, and I think I just said I'm going to change the oil first before I put that part on, but actually I'm going to empty the oil, drain the oil, and then remove the oil filter and then proceed from them, so from there. So I'll be back. Okay, I got the, let's see here, I got that, uh, the oil, where'd it go? God, I can't see, right there. I got the uh, oil filter adapter removed. Oil still draining into the pan down here. It takes forever, man, I'm gonna get all that out, but you can still see it's draining there, so I'm gonna let it drain for a while. Um, here's the, the old adapter that I, that I took off, real easy. It was just three screws. Um, it's ex extremely easy. Trust me, you can't miss them. There's three bolts that are those bolts right there that are holding that adapter in. And then the instructions say to remove those two uh, rubber washers, gaskets or whatever from the back side of this. I don't know why, because they don't say to reuse them on the new install because the new install has its own rings, which I have already placed in there. Now the instructions are again vague about something. It says apply P80 O-ring lubricant to the O-rings prior to installation. Um, but it doesn't say to apply it to the beginning here when you install two O-rings. So I called a uh, I called the company, I'm sorry, I called my local dealer, talked to a service guy, and he says you don't need to apply that stuff on there. Just put a little bit of thin oil um, on those O-rings like you normally would when you're working with gaskets and oil, and just stick them in there. He says that that um, P80 O-ring lubricant is supposed to help hold the O-rings in place, but they're holding themselves in place pretty well, if you ask me. So. The next step is to go ahead and install this new oil fil filter adapter onto the bike with the three bolts that are included in the kit. So I guess I'm not going to use the, the ones that came off the bike. And after I install that, then I have to install this filter adapter straight onto the oil filter adapter. So I guess because the original one has its own, as you can see. But we're going to put this new one. See, there's the original one here. The doohickey there. And we're going to put this on the new adapter. Now to get this um, adapter straight screw or whatever into the oil filter adapter, you're going to need a pretty big old uh, 12 millimeter, it seems, what they're saying here. Um... Yeah, a 12 millimeter Allen head socket. So I got a set of mine at uh, Harbor Freight. It's a good idea to keep those around if you're gonna be working on your bike because you never know when you're gonna need something this freaking big. So yeah, that's how I'm gonna install that, that into that hole there. I think this goes without saying, but you're gonna need to clean that mess off of the point where the oil filter adapter mounts onto before you mount the new one on. Just one thing I suggest you do is make sure, and this is the old 
adapter here, but on the back side where you put those new O-rings on, on the new adapter, make sure they're in there really good. You don't want those things to come out a little bit. So whenever you go to bolt the new one on, which I'm starting here now, I would hate for those uh, gaskets to get pinched in between, you know, somehow that would be a catastrophe because you'd be leaking oil like crazy. So also I put um, the first bolt in at the top. Now these are these two holes here are for later when we had, when we install the small ones there. That's for when we put the uh, oil cooler on. Um, but there's the first bolt I just put in. Got my little Gremlin bell dingle in there. There's the first bolt. So put that one in first because it's going to hold the top part of the the adapter in place while you get the other two in, in uh, installed. Okay, I got the uh, oil filter adapter straight thingy in there. Um, it says to use 84 plus or minus uh, nine inch pounds. So I have a torque wrench. Um, let's see here. Actually, no, 22 plus or minus two foot pounds. So my torque wrench is not very good. It's from Harbor Freight, kind of sucks. So I've got this electronic one that I use and I think it's more accurate. So be careful with these uh, mechanical torque wrenches. I don't trust them at all. It's, it's just doesn't seem like it's, uh, I don't know, I don't trust it. So now I'm gonna plug up the, uh, put the new uh, plugs back into the oil filter. By the way, I bought these uh, magnetic um, oil filter plugs. They got a little, that little ball bearing looking thing right there. That's a magnet. And of course I got two of these and that magnet is supposed to attract any fine metal particles from the engine. So when I go change it again next, I pull this out, there should be particles attached there. Just one way to kind of keep them out of the engine and then I'll clean it and put it back in. So. Um, I forgot who I bought these from, to be honest with you. Um, let's see here, I got a little receipt here. So, there you go, whatever that says, I can't see up close. Once again, the pathetic Indian instructions don't specifically say to install the new oil filter on after putting the adapter on in that uh, oil filter adapter straight uh, threaded tube, but it does show a picture at least of the oil filter going on there. And then the next step, you can see that the oil filter is already on. So Indian, you're killing me. So now, like I said, I'm gonna put those uh, plugs in and then uh, put the oil filter back on and continue with the procedure of putting the oil cooler back on or installing the oil cooler. Okay, I got the plugs on, um, on the oil, the oil plugs in, and I'm just kind of pre-fitting this oil cooler on. And basically, once you get it on those little rubber grommets, here's one and then the other side is over there. And again, I'm kind of curious about this bolt here. I may just manually tighten it down to what I think it's gonna have to be, because I just don't see how tightening that thing down so tight is gonna allow that this bracket to slip in between that groove right there. So anyway, um, so what you're gonna have to do, it looks like is tilt this thing backwards first to get these, these connections lined up. I still have to put the gaskets on there. And then um, once you tilt it forward, the whole thing goes forward, then that's gonna allow these to go in. Now this, this uh, plug here, I have to really push that thing back as hard as I can so this this line here will be able to pass by. It's kind of kind of tight fitting there. It's gonna be really sucky though if I have to ever take any of these out because I'll take the whole oil filter, I mean the whole oil cooler off um, to get to it. I'm not really happy about that. I may disconnect this here so that way I can easily take this out in the future if I ever need to, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be necessary or not, but I think I'll probably just leave it on there. I'm pretty sure that they have that installed that way on the bikes that come with the oil coolers already. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put those gaskets on and go from there. 
By the way, it does eventually say in step six to install the oil filter after you've installed installed the um, oil cooler, but I think that's kind of stupid because it's a whole lot easier getting that oil filter on before you put that oil cooler on. And like I said in the picture, it already shows it installed there. It's really stupid. And on the previous instructions, it shows it going on there. So I don't know, I don't care. I'm gonna do it my way. We'll see if it works or not, but it should. All right, the next step, I gotta put these little, what they call backup rings on, on there first, on that part of the oil cooler. Do the other one. And then the rubber gaskets go next. So I'm gonna put a little thin layer of oil, fresh oil on those. And they do, they do get on here pretty snug. So they're not coming off when you go to, a, to a, put this on and there you go like i said those rubber gaskets fit on there pretty snug they're not going to come off during the installation process so now i'm going to see if i can't get this puppy on and then these little once i slide everything on i have to bolt these little um, adapters on or whatever to the oil filter adapter thingy majig um, and these are the two bolts that will hold those in place. Okay, as I was trying to get this uh, damn thing on, starting to get a little frustrated here. Uh, now I understand why they want to use, um, let me show you here, this P80 uh, lubricant, um, rubber assembly lubricant. And I'm glad I bought some because that's what the instructions said. Now the, the guy at the uh, dealership said, oh, you don't need it. But I think the reason why is because when I was trying to push those tubes on with the rubber gasket on, that gasket is really tight. It's just not slipping on. So I think that's what the lubricant's gonna help do is to help me um, push that whole thing on. So yeah, I'm not at my limit here, but I'm getting there. Hmm. Gotta do it. I swear nothing is ever easy when you work on a motorcycle. At least I don't think. Okay, to get these uh, these things right here in, that's where the gasket is, right there and right there. You really gotta wiggle the crap out of that to get it on. It's tight, okay? You gotta push real hard. And one thing I did, at first it tells you to do the, the bottom one first. So I got that going and I'm gonna tighten it down here in a sec, but. First of all, I want to make, make sure you have these, uh, this little uh, thing right here, the little adapter thing, this right here, um, set in the right position. Don't let it get caught up between the lower tube and your oil filter. After you put, if you put this on first and that is stuck between the oil filter and this line, then you're gonna to to take this back out and, and get this in position, this little, this little thing that you, that you mounted on, okay? So I didn't, I didn't do it myself, but it's just something I could see happening if I wasn't paying attention. So anyway, to get this second one on here, uh, I used this uh, hex uh, driver and I didn't push on the plastic, the, the white ring, that backup ring, I pushed on this mount part right there. And I kind of hit the back of my, my uh, wrench here, kind of jammed it down. I didn't hit the ring itself because that probably would have broken the plastic. So make sure you, you uh, only hit that little lip underneath that thing right there. Just kind of kind of tap on it. It'll get that that pipe and the gaskets and everything inside. And I decided to wire my O2 sensor thing and just this way, just kind of pack it up in here somehow. So that way, if I ever have to get to it, it won't be so damn hard to do later on. Instead of because before it was like stuff way down down in there and that would not be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish tightening up that bolt and then I'm gonna add the other bolt, which is gonna be real tricky because it's way behind all those pipes and stuff. Just wanted to show you the next step that I did. So I, I haven't tightened up the bottom one yet, but I did manage to get this through. And it says to hand tighten those first before you put the wrench on, but I gotta tilt this a little bit, but there's no way you're gonna get your finger in there. So you just gotta be real careful if you use the wrench to start the bolt. Don't cross-thread it, you'll be crying. 
Okay, back to work. Another tip, just to be, uh, that's something I've kind of noticed as I was screwing these in, the top one, um, this plate, this plate right here, um, it wasn't flat, flush with the part, the part underneath, the, the, the oil bracket or whatever. As I was screwing it down, it was getting tight, but it wasn't flat. So I stopped what I was doing and I kind of tapped down on this part right here to get that, that little plate to, to lay flat again. And then it was allowing me to screw more. So just don't let that thing get all twisted up. Make sure it goes flat as you're bolting it down. This one was doing okay right here. It's, it's, it's kind of loose right now, but it's, it's going to lay flat, but this one wasn't at first. So I got those on this this one is flush it appears but this one kind of concerned about it i've taken that bolt out and put it back in making sure that this plate is flush but it kind of it's i mean it's up a little bit on this side just a, i mean so tiny it's a little bit it's not entirely even with the other one but i have it bolted down pretty tight so i i'm i'm getting i mean that's not a that point there is not a gasket you know a seal is just to hold the this pipe in place so it doesn't come out so i'm assuming this the other seals will will hold properly they should again that's these two things here are just to hold the pipes in place so we will see so now i'm going to you can see i fit that little o2 sensor plug up underneath there and i can still i guess if i ever had to get I don't think if I ever had to take this off right here, this is this whole cooler has got to come off again. So whatever. And now just this last part is to put this in there and that will hold it in place. And then we can continue with uh, the oil um, portion, adding oil to every to the engine. One last thing before I move on into the um, filling up the engine with oil is I, I went ahead and tightened this down with this ratchet tool, uh, but it all it's doing is just compressing that, that gasket more. So I'm not going to follow the instructions in the manual. I mean, that's ridiculous. The, I forget how, how much pressure they said or whatever to tighten it, but it's ridiculous. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to squeeze that gasket. That's, that's all it's doing is just squeezing the gasket. You know, and that, that thing's got to fit between there. So I don't think it's going to come out. I'll check it though after I go riding for a while, just kind of check all these bolts, make sure they're all in place. So. And after I got this top top uh, bolt in, um, as you can see, this doesn't really sit flush on that gasket there, but oh well, it doesn't really need to. Everything's really tight now. It's nothing's moving. Everything's real snug. So, you know, these hoses, yeah, those, everything. So I'm, I'm only thing I'm concerned about is just this one gasket here, but like I said, it's, it's in there. I don't think it's gonna leak. It shouldn't. Well, not the gasket, but the uh, the little adapter is not laying completely flush, but it's 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 like less than a quarter of a millimeter, maybe I guess. All right, now to put the oil in. By the way, I have my uh, assistant here. He's uh, making sure that I get the job done. Um, all he's doing is just meowing and annoying me, though. So I think I'm about to go put him in the house before I start filling up the oil because I don't want him to somehow jump between the oil stream and that and then really tick me off. So, Tommy, you're out of here. Okay, I think I'm done. I have the oil in and I've checked for leaks. I haven't had any leaks yet. I'm going to go have some lunch because I've been on this now for, I don't know, a couple hours at least. I had to do some other stuff like take off that that uh, cover from Kiriakin, that was a kind of a hassle. It slowed me down, just the other prep work, you know, but a couple of hours doing it the first time, maybe this video will help you guys do it quicker. I think it should. Um, so I'm gonna take it for a test ride later on and, and see if any leaks are going on. I need to call the dealership and see if I have to add any additional oil to account for the extra um, oil that's going to be squirting through the oil cooler. I don't know. And if I, if they say I need to, then I will add to this video. So 
Um, I'm going to take it out for a ride, come back, and then I'll do one more little short clip and then end this long video. Hopefully it's helpful to you. All right, um, I called a couple of dealers, talked to the service guys. They don't really know what the hell they're talking about. One guy said, oh, you should put a whole quart of oil to compensate for the new oil cooler. I don't agree with that. I just don't see that being possible. That, that, that oil cooler could not possibly hold a quart of oil. Maybe a quarter a quart or something. But anyway, so I called Indian um, directly and they're, uh, they didn't seem to really know either the exact, you know, what you should, even though it doesn't say anything in the instructions, they said, well, maybe add a little bit of oil to it and then just check it. So I added a little bit of oil to it and that's all I'm gonna do. I I'm not gonna worry about it. I took it for a test drive, test ride, and uh, got back no leaks, which I'm happy about. And um, oil level looks normal. It's right there at the bottom of the dipstick, you know, where the, the add mark is. So um, I know they say, oh, get it between the, the ad and the fill, but you're not supposed to do that. You can overfill it and cause all kinds of problems. So six quarts plus a little more, good enough. Um, that's about it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video and get it online for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send them to me. I, I love to help out when I can.